and we're going to be making a really jazzy sea serpent. The sea serpent is made from a coil of clay and you're going to get a piece of clay about the size of my hand here and I'm going to show you how to roll a coil. That's the main thing about making the sea serpent is rolling the coil, getting the shape you want, and then we'll be adding all of the details, the scales, the buttons. I'm going to show you how to make an open mouth and have to have a little button or something inside there. So this is a lot of fun to do. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to roll a coil. Rolling a, rolling a coil in clay is one of the most basic things that you can do with your, with any type of clay that you're using, whether it's ceramic clay or whether it is air dry clay, it's all the same. So today we're going to be making a coil. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Now the way I was taught is you squeeze it a little bit just to make it get longer like this. Now I'm not squeezing it so hard that it's gonna break in half, but I'm gently squeezing it. And as you do that, it gets a little bit longer each time you do, okay? Then once it gets about in this size, about this length, we're gonna start rolling. And the way that I like to roll is back and forth. And then as I do it, I start with my fingers together when I'm rolling and then I spread them out. And as my fingers spread out, the clay gets longer. So I start with my fingers together, see that? And I'm rolling back and forth. You wanna go all the way around. And then as you do that, spread your fingers and your clay will follow your finger. And that's how you make a great log of clay or a great coil. There are so many things that can be made with coils. So many really great works of art have been made just from coils of clay. It's amazing. So you wanna get this to be about, I'd say about 12 inches long. You want your coil to be not too skinny. So this coil is probably about almost an inch thick. So don't, don't let it get too thin. And you wanna make sure it's even. You want it to be the same thickness as it is down here, as it is here and in the middle. You want it to be an even coil. So here we have our coil. So the first thing I wanna do is work on the head. So I'm gonna pick an end, whichever end I like the best and one of the tools that we have with this project is a paper clip. The paper clip is used for the scales. I'm gonna show you how to imprint scales on here, but we're also gonna use it as a little carving tool just to make the open mouth of the serpent. So I'm gonna take this paper clip and on the long flat side, I'm going to just take my paper clip and cut in there and make a, make a cut that's about an inch long. And then I'm gonna open that up, and you can already see that this is going to be the serpent's mouth. I'm going to pinch this with my fingers to flatten it and to stretch it out a little bit. Because this, this part of the, of the serpent is going to be thinner than the serpent's body. This is his mouth and it's wide open. I think you get a nice effect with your open mouth. Okay, so we've got that. And then the next thing is, I want the serpent to look like he's sliding up from the ocean. So I'm going to make some bends in his body, maybe. And you wanna make sure you can steady him, make sure he will stay standing up. And 
and in order to make him stand up, you want to make sure you kind of flatten him a little bit where the body is on the surface and raise it up a little bit where his body is raised up. Give that a good tap. Turn his head the way you want it to be. Open his mouth. And the way, the way I got his mouth to stay open is I stuck a button in there. It's like he's bringing you a button from the bottom of the ocean as a gift. So now it's time to have some fun. We're going to decorate our serpent with some buttons. And I'm also gonna show you how to use your paper clip tool to give him a scaly texture, just like you would see on dragons and other mystical types of serpents that you may have seen in magazines and on the TV. So we're gonna start off by, I'm gonna make him have some scales that stand up along his back. So the way I do that is I just take the button and I'm gonna sink it into the clay. You're gonna sink the button in maybe just about a quarter of an inch, something like that. Just enough so it will stay because as this clay dries, it will shrink. And as it shrinks, it will shrink and up around this button and the button will be in there to stay. So I'm gonna add these colorful buttons, just any color you want, however you want to decorate yours. Anything goes here with this. I like using the colorful buttons. I'll put a big one down here on his tail. Maybe two. And what you wanna do is just try to keep, keep him from uh, falling down. You want to hold steady the body of him while you're putting in the buttons. Just make sure you steady him a little bit so that he doesn't, you don't distort the shape and you don't ruin um, the curve that you have on his body. Okay, so that's the first round of scales. And I also want to add some eyes so i'm going to sink in a couple of buttons for the eyes It's time to start adding some texture and scales to our serpent. And the way I do this is I'm going to be using my paper clip and pressing in like this. To make scales onto the body of our serpent. You can make as many scales as you want. I think this really adds to the design, having scales all over.
Another thing you can do to add some texture and some interest to your serpent is using a pencil just to make some indents. You're just indenting the clay. I would say if you do this, just be careful not to do it too hard. You wouldn't want to make big, huge holes into your little serpent. But this also, it's just a neat way that you can add more texture. All right, so now my serpent is dry and I'm uh, going to show you how to make a nice background to display your serpent. I have a couple of different backgrounds here, but this, uh, this one I used watercolor pencils. I used regular crayons to make a really cool design. So first I started, I wanted this to look like the serpent was in his ocean environment. He's coming up on the beach. So when you display him this way, and the way it looks finished is showing him on coming out of the water and onto the beach. On this one, you could also, another way of doing it, you could just show him down in the ocean floor along with his other fish friends. So the way I made this is using watercolor pencils, which I colored in all over. And then I also added regular crayons to add to the watercolor pencils. I used blue, I used some green, the colors of the ocean as I have, have seen it. And then to blend everything in, I use a little bit of water to bring out the watercolor pencil and that just blends beautifully with the crayon. This is a mixed media approach to this. Whenever you do something that's called mixed media, it means you're using more than one type of art material. So in this case, I've used crayons and watercolor pencils. This type of display is called a diorama. And dioramas can be used for just about any kind of situation where you want to display something in its own environment. So this is the way I would like to display my serpent. Coming up from the ocean onto the sand. Once your serpent is totally dry, and this is gonna take a couple of days or so for this clay to totally dry out, and it has to be dry before you can add any type of color to him. You can use markers, you can use uh, watercolors in, in a watercolor set. For this particular serpent, I used regular watercolors in a watercolor set, and I just dipped it to the color and painted it on. It dries really quickly, and you'll get a soft shade. Now, if you wanted to also use something else to even make it more dramatic, you could get your markers and actually color designs, add extra textures, extra de designs to your serpent, and that will give you an even more dynamic effect. 